My name is Memo Ngui uh, from Industrial Psychology Consultants. I do have my team as well in the meeting uh, that look after issues to do with salary service. So we are going to talk about uh, salary trends, what are the issues, what is happening, and the any outlook comments. Please feel free to uh, come in and uh, give your comments as we finish this presentation. We are on the ground. We probably know much better in some of the areas than us. Uh, what we we are basing our analysis on uh, what we see uh, in terms of the data that we collect from the clients. But uh, I, I, I would I would think that uh, the majority of us have got uh, their own practice that they're doing uh, in their own organizations. Okay, so maybe let's start with the, the economic challenges. We are all aware that uh, the past uh, month, maybe June, July, was uh, those two months were really terrible in terms of the rise in cost of living and also depreciation of the Zimbabwe dollar. Um, uh, we were basically in an economic recession. There seems to have been a, a, a slowdown to what was happening then in terms of exchange rate depreciation, uh, uh, which was largely due to excessive money creation, which is currently in decline. And then there was also uh, inflation being fueled by the depreciation of the exchange rate and many other factors. Uh, in the process increasing the cost of living, which we were all aware because we were experiencing that. Uh, we do also know that uh, uh, manufacturing mining sets are affected by low commodity practice prices to some extent, and uh, we did experience significant power uh, interruptions uh, during the month of July uh, as well, due to a number of, a number of reasons. Uh, if you look at this, all these factors, uh, we all experience them, uh, whether they are going to, whether the current or the current stability in courts is going to remain there. That's something else uh, that we can debate. But it was a really huge challenge for anyone in HR and any manager or leader trying to make sure that they retain and uh, attract employees to their own organization. So that was a big challenge for, for everyone. And we all felt it uh, in terms of uh, what was happening. And all these factors do affect uh, salaries, especially uh, the exchange rate, uh, which is a big issue for, for most of us. Uh, uh, for example, you just imagine someone who earns in Zimbabwe dollar and they earn a certain amount of money uh, beginning of the month. Uh, at the end of the month, when they get paid, that money will have probably been reduced by half due to exchange rate depreciation. Uh, and to some extent, there is a bit of dollarization in the economy. Most people uh, do uh, transact in US dollars. If you are not earning US dollars, which means you're at a disadvantage. If you have looked at supermarkets currently, you would have noticed that there is very little happening there. Uh, the demand, uh, economists will call it aggregate demand, seems to have uh, 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 gone down significantly. If you go into most public supermarkets, they're actually empty. But if you go to the tax shops, what they call the tax shops, which are basically your general dealers, uh, you find that uh, the, the price in US dollars, the price in reasonable US dollars, and those people tend to get more businesses. And uh, 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 surprisingly, you find that most of the manufacturers are actually distributing to those people. Uh, so th th these are challenges that we that we that we are seeing uh, in the market, and we need to deal with them one way or the other. So we, as we go through the presentation, we we'll talk about some of the issues. Uh, as we go into understanding the the data that comes out from the market, there are quite a number of challenges especially around salary service. For example, when you are choosing your competitors, uh, when you are comparing salaries, which we, most of you do, and say, look, can you do a salary survey for me, for this kind of, uh, I want you to compare me with so and so. The, the, the challenge that is there is that choosing organizations from the same sector does not help you that much. Uh, here is the reason. The reason is that your staff do not necessarily go to the same sector. Uh, if you look generally, about 60% of employees can work in any sector, especially when you look at your support staff in other key if, if you look at an engineer as an example, uh, if they're in mining currently, they don't necessarily have to work in mining. They can work, go and work actually in a bank. They can, uh, they can go and work uh, in manufacturing. They can go and work in agriculture. So the, the key component that you need to look at is where am I losing my staff to? Which sectors and which roles, where are they going? That's my, if you want to be more granular, that's what you need to do. Uh, rather than choosing and say, look, can you compare me with this five organization? It doesn't help you unless really your, 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 your focus is to just get a, an increase. But it doesn't help in terms of retention and attracting staff. So even choosing similar organi similar size organization does not help you at all. Uh, comparing the general market is the best way. Because the general market gives you a, a best and a better, a broader idea in terms of where are the salaries going, where is the market going in terms of these salaries. Okay, it may not be granular in terms of what you should pay, uh, but if you pay above 
what the general market is paying, you are unlikely to lose a stuff at a grand scale because you are paying generally around the, what the market is paying rather than specific. I'm not saying that don't compare. There are certain roles, for example, if you're in mining, uh, mining related roles, you would need to compare with similar mines, but there are certain roles that can't work anyway. A mining engineer will find it very difficult to work in any other sector. A, a mine captain will find it difficult to work in any other sector. So those are the roles. So when you're doing a solar service, you need to take the, all these factors into consideration. Tourism is another one, uh, but for the majority of organizations, uh, 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 it will be better to compare with the general market. The reason why people sometimes then compare with uh, similar organizations, for example, if you look at state entities, uh, it's, it's from a policy point of view, because you'll be asked, are other parastators paying the same? Or are you not overpaying when compared to other parastators and things like, like that? Even if you look at other parastators, it's a diverse group of companies, of organizations, which makes it very difficult to do proper comparison. So these are challenges that you need to be aware of. So that when you are then you're recommending to your, to your executive team, you know exactly the dynamics that we are talking about and what are the significance of what you are saying to the organization, what you are recommending. I do know others will argue and say, okay, I mean, manufacturing, for example, beverages, and I want to compare with similar organizations. It's mainly for pricing, both if you are going to do it for pricing purposes, yes. Because if you are going to, to, to pay your employees probably three times more than your average salary in your, in your sector, it means your product, you have to factor that into your product pricing. And you may end up pricing yourself out of the market. Those are all other considerations. So doing a salary survey, look at salary survey data, it uh, really depends on what is the purpose of our salary survey. Why are we doing it? Are we losing staff? Are we failing to attract people into the organization? and the, which people are actually refusing or rejecting our offers. These are all dynamics that you need to look at as you, as you go through that. So when you look at the National Salad Survey, the, the, the data that we are relying on in terms of the data that I'm going to share here is coming from what, 49 organizations. Uh, those are just uh, statistics uh, from the, from, from the, the, the data, uh, and, but I'll go into much detail later on. So when you look at salaries, I wanted to, to have a look at this, but this is uh, by IPC level, okay? For those that use the Castellion, it's almost uh, almost the same. But even if you use the, the other grading systems, you can see that grade number one is normally your top your top grade. Number two, your next executive, which will be uh, in part of the notebook, that will be a uh, sum E, sum F, uh, lower R F uh, that go into 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 grade number two. Then the mid the next level of management is level number three. So if you look there, the average salary when you look at the general market roughly for the CEO is roughly about seventy thousand equivalent in US dollars. That, that's what you normally find. That's the average salary. So if you're paying a CEO anything below that, uh, it will largely be depending on uh, on your affordability. Then if you look at, uh, I'm sure most people would, would want to look at HR, HR professionals. At director level, you look at level two and three there. You are roughly looking at uh, 10,000. Maybe if I do an average there, about 11.5. Yeah, that, that's the average that you look at. But again, remember, when you're looking at these averages, remember there are lower pairs and, up, and, and uh, higher pairs. So averages tend to be affected by outliers. Uh, if there's one comment that is paying very low in the sample, it tends to reduce the average. If there's one comment that is paying very high in the sample, it tends to increase the average. That's the, 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 the danger there. So if you come to the market median, for example, if you look at the market median there, you will notice that for the CEO level, on average, you're looking at about an equivalent of 11,000 US dollars. Then when you go to the next level, which is where we are looking at your directors, about 8,000 uh, US dollars. Then the next level, which uh, uh, may be cover HR, uh, HR managers, around level three, level four, some. Uh, that's where you find, depending on the size of your organization and where it, how it's graded. So for, for, for if they are directors, you're looking at 8,000. If they are managers and the other HR roles, you'll find about 7,000, 5,000 there. That, that's, what you are, you are, you, you, that's where you get those salaries. So if you're an HR professional, in terms of who, uh, a manager or executive and earning less than 7,000, you're probably being uh, underpaid in relation to, to, to the market. But again, remember, what your organization end up paying you is dependent on affordability and many other factors within your own organization. So it, it doesn't entirely say that if you're underpaid in relation to this data, it means you have to go and get an increase. No, there are other factors to take consideration. I would not go into, the, there are other comments that will go into the 75th percentile, uh, 95th percentile, depending on what their policy says. There are some companies that you've got policies that will say, we only pay our staff at the 75th percentile, which means the upper quarter. 
uh, it's entirely up to, to, to you to do that. Uh, and depends on the policy affordability and sustainability of those salaries. These are basic salaries that I'm looking at there. So that's, that's how you would look at it. So when you look at total direct cash, we are now including allowances that people get. What are the cash allowances they get? You can see the jump in terms of the average salaries and also the jump in terms of uh, the median market salary. If you go back again to, to HR director, you right now be looking about uh, about thirteen thousand six hundred. If you look at the median, and fifteen thousand if you look at the the, the 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 average. But I do know that most of the HR professional, most of them will be graded in grade three, some in grade four. So you're looking at about ten thousand to eight thousand there. Now, if you look at the media, that, that's where it will, it will be. But again, you can place any position within your organization and relate to the salaries that I'm showing there. Uh, at, at, this is the national, at the national, national level, uh, in terms of uh, putting everything in one basket. And for me, uh, based on my own experience and what I see in the market, that's the best benchmark that you can look at. Yes, you can then go into sub-sectors, but you need to have a very clear picture. What is the general market paying for this particular role? Then it's good to look at the median and the average. But the most stable one is the, is the median of the, of the market. Uh, if you are going to pay your employees around the, at least around the median, you are not terribly behind the market, and they are not terribly going to uh, to have challenges attracting or retaining employees. But anything below that, significantly below the median of the market, you are going to have challenges in, in retaining employees. You are going to have challenges in in actually attracting employees into your into into your organization. If you go at the extreme end of this particular table, you will notice that there is what is called the CV. It's not a curriculum vitae. It's actually referring to coefficient of variation. This coefficient of variation, just saying how, how varied are the salaries that are in the group? How wide is the variation? The bigger the number, the more varied the salaries. So as you go down, you can see there, as you go down, there's very little variability in salaries that are paid for non-managerial employees. But as you go up, you will notice that the salaries that are paid are much higher. There's so much variability, which means you can have someone who is paying, just for argument, sake, if you go to CEO, you can have someone who is paying a CEO 8,000, and and, and uh, someone who's paying a CEO 40,000 in the same group of CEOs. Because the company size matters, especially when you look at the executives, company size matters uh, a lot in terms of both headcount and uh, revenue, balance sheet, and all those things. Those are the things that the boards will look at when they're trying to pay executives, especially, uh, and the, more importantly, the, the CEO. Then we go to the total cost of employment. We are now putting even issues to do with the vehicles and many other things there. You can see the salary then jumps to 24,000 for the CEO and a median of 18,000 there. Uh, if you look at the roles, the, the HR managers do occupy or executives, you are looking at grade two, three, and four. That's where you find most of them. So you'll have, if you look at the median, you'll have a 8.6 as a on the, the lower end and roughly about 14,000 on the on the upper end across the market remember we're looking at across the market that's that's what you find in in, in terms of that again when you look at the coefficient of variations tend to decrease uh, as as you, as you go down which means there is less variability in the salaries for the lower level staff so if you were to look at total cost you're not getting a car and everything if you are an HR director we expect you to be earning around 14,000 US dollars uh, if you put it in, in US dollars. If you're an HR uh, executive business partner there sometimes, HR executive 8,000 to 11,000 equivalent, uh, depending on the size of your organization. The size does matter uh, when some people pay. Because sometimes size means affordability uh, and things like that. Both size in terms of balance and, and, uh, and revenue are key or, or, or income of the organization. Okay, so uh, then we then look at the, the, the highest paying sectors in terms of rankings. That's where that's what basically we see from the test, the same data mining uh, at the top, uh, agro processing at the top. And if you look at the top two, the mining and the agro processing, there is a big component of import uh, 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 export revenue that they generate. And there's more stability in terms of their income. And they tend to generally be affected as long as they're productive and they're producing, they tend to be affected largely by uh, by prices on the global market uh, rather than internal factors. That's why maybe they can afford that. And as you drift, you see insurance is the lowest in terms of being competitive uh, when you compare across all sectors. That's that's what you, you, you tend to get, to get there. Uh, and insurance generally has always been a low wage uh, a, 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 a low wage sector, just like hospitality, with hospitality there, hospitality and agriculture are low wage earners. Uh, if you look at the elite 
in terms of uh, uh, salary payments, uh, you will find insurance uh, not faring very well uh, if you look at the elites in terms of, of, of salaries. Okay, if you look at CEO to worker ratio, you will see that uh, uh, in Zimbabwe we are still fine. You look at America there, uh, which means the, C, the, the CEO is paid 324 times the, the lowest paid. But if you look at America, the highest is actually about 3,000 times the lowest paid. In Zimbabwe, you can see we are all well below 100. But for most parastatals, normally, if you look at the trend, they need to, to make sure that it's, it's around uh, 10 times uh, the lowest paid. That's what is called, uh, considered to be fair and equitable when you look at parastatals. Anything above that, uh, most likely there will already be noise in your organization. If you do pay a, a, a CEO to work a ratio, average worker ratio, uh, pay ratio of of more than uh, uh, ten times. That's the standard that you normally find in the in the in the in the state entities. Okay, okay. When you then compare uh, 2017, for example, uh, USD salaries for 2017 versus the 2022, you can see there uh, uh, that there were there are actually big differences for the for the higher grade. That's where you find significant differences. In fact, in 2017, they were earning much higher than what they're earning now in US dollar terms. Uh, but the, as you go to grade six and the, the lower grades going down, you see the, the, the difference is insignificant, very small. That's the difference that you find there. Okay, so that, that's a challenge for, 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 for most people. So that's, that, that's important for you to, to just have a feel in terms of how. So we started in 2017 uh, when we were dollarized. Where are we now? In which part of the of the of the of the of, of, of our, uh, the, the, the levels are affected uh, or have lost in terms of value? You see that your executive grades or senior managerial grades are the ones that have been largely affected by by that kind of of, of, of change and the transition that has happened from 2017. The common benefits we are all aware of them: the transport allowance, housing, cell phone, all these are benefits uh, 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 that you find. When you look at the cost of living, uh, this is our own cost of living tracker that we have. You can see it, 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 it was stable around uh, in 2021, although you could, we can actually see from that graph, a, a general upward trend was already there. Things started getting a bit worse uh, as we went into December 2021, and there was a huge jump after April. Uh, soon after we came back from Easter, there was a huge jump in 2022, and it you can see the steep curve going up there. And the things started slowing down uh, from June there, a slight slowdown uh, in August. We'll see what happens in September, October, there, as we go to the end of the year. But it's an important graph. It's also on our human capital app if you want to track this. It's important to, to look at that. Let's look at expenditure versus income. Uh, for most uh, people, this is on average. You are now combining, not necessarily by grade. You are now combining. Normally, your executives will be grade three, uh, level three, two, and one. You are now putting all of them together. So, if you look at that, you will see that the expenditure versus income. The expenditure is, the, is this one. And the income is the, the, the expenditure is this one. So, and the income is, is that. Maybe let's look at the difference. Uh, what is left after they have uh, 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 taken care of all the expenditure? The executives, you can see they still have 31%. The lowest is your NEC employees at 13.33%. So as you are doing your, your adjustment, you need to know that these people at the lower end of the stick in your organization uh, do really have a very constrained uh, income uh, scope. And if you can, it's always good to make sure that they, well, they are well looked after. Otherwise, if, if, if the gap it continues to increase, you do have industrial relations problems uh, in there. Uh, so that, that's uh, something that you may need to reflect on and see what then you need to do as, a, as, a, as an organization. When you look at prices, generally, these are the increases. We have already talked about that in the, in the, in the, in the, yeah, in, in the cost of living. The uh, prices have been going up, but uh, so far now, the past two weeks or so, uh, a bit of stabilization, whether that will be sustained with something else. Then when you look at payment of salaries in US dollars, uh, just, we just start with staff cost to income. You can see there, for example, staff cost to income is very high in transport and logistics, uh, followed by uh, telecoms, it's very high. You come to a non governmental organization, very high, it's typical because it's all people. Then you come to banking, because it's largely people, but I would expect the banking uh, one to, to have gone down, but it seems to be going up. I don't know whether it's just because of uh, adjustments, the staff cost to, to income. The, so that's also important to benchmark as you are doing your own analysis internally. Uh, what were we doing in terms of staff cost income versus our own sector? 
because that shows how competitive you are in terms of your pricing as well, as if you look at that. Okay, uh, where most revenue is generated, this is just classifying which sectors are actually export generated. You, you, you can see the top of mining, NGO, and NGO is really not export generated, it just says that their income comes from outside. Then transport, uh, logistics are all these other areas that you, you, you look at tourism as well. And uh, the RTG is denominated uh, FMCG, uh, no export revenue. They do have local uh, uh, income to some extent, but very little uh, that you find there. So when you look at percentage employers paying in US dollars, you can see there in 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 in, Ju in July in in March it was seventy, and this is now a, a, a increased to eighty three percent. Those employers who are paying in US dollars. Most employers, if we were to say it, let's say eight out of ten employers pay some form of US dollar component. Whether it's uh, we are excluding coupons, which are actually US dollars as well. We are excluding coupons here. But most companies or organizations have actually a US dollar component. They can call it whatever name they want, but there is. Uh, and this all happened significantly between the month of, of March, April, May, and June uh, to July. That's where most of the, these things were happening. Uh, most employees were really desperate to keep employees. Uh, most employee, employees were restive. Uh, and, uh, and they wanted to, to count them down by making sure that they, they give them some form of stability through a payment in US dollars. Uh, okay. So in, in terms of uh, staff going uh, getting in, uh, pay in US dollars, those are just showing the trends from March, the darker one being March, and the other one being uh, being uh, 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 being the July. As you can see, for the executive management, nothing much has changed. There was there were most of them already anyway, to some extent being cushioned uh, by by some of the employers uh, in order to retain the executive staff. Okay. A significant change in the revenue. This one I'll skip. Uh, uh, we also did in one of our surveys did ask employers if there was any reduction in uh, in, in in turnover uh, as a result of them paying in US dollars. You can see uh, uh, and uh, 45 percent in March said they did see a reduction, and 42 percent in July did say that they had seen a reduction in uh, in the staff turnover. Uh, this one entirely depends with the uh, each organization. Uh, the impact of what you, the intervention that you are putting. We also did get out a, a, quite a, a big survey on the benefits that's why when employees prefer. Uh, this is surveyed uh, a, a, a total participation rate of over 800 employees in Zimbabwe. And I wanted to look at this uh, a bit more detail so that you understand what I'm trying to highlight here. Look at what is preferred, medical aid contribution. It's because largely because of what is happening in the health sector, uh, most people are really desperate. And they will be the first thing that they want to have is that if they get sick, they must be able to go to hospital and be catered for uh, uh, well in a private hospital. That, that, that's, that's why medical aid has become such an important aspect. But also medical aid uh, societies themselves, the cost have gone up significantly in terms of that pension. I'm surprised by pension because when you look at pensions about because of the erosion of the value of pension, maybe the fact that the employees have no option. But uh, 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 yeah, I do know that uh, now there is a component where people are now uh, paying in US dollars. Performance bonus, starting to check, housing loan, education assistance for personal development, housing allowance, uh, school fees assistance fewer coupons, airtime allowance, and, uh, and fewer allowance. If you look at this, if you were to put this according to the data that we have, if you had put this out and make sure that you focus on this, you are likely to be able to remember these do not necessarily increase performance of employees. Maybe expense performance related uh, pay bonus. The rest of them are really done as part of what is called the competitive necessity. Uh, if you don't do them, employees will leave. If you do them, they may stay. If you do them, you may be able to attract uh, your, your employees. Okay, so the bottom preferred, least preferred benefits, if you look at Zimbabwe, these are the least preferred. You subsidize the meal, uh, okay? Funeral cover, transport allowance, per diem, cell phone allowance, grocery, education loans, car, car or vehicle allowance, cell phone allowance, company car, fully expensed. Uh, these are, uh, uh, are the, the least preferred. That is when you consolidate all the uh, the the or the, all, all the, 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 the respondents. There is only a clear statistical significant relation between what benefits most employees prefer and the employee level. So what you're saying is varies by level, the benefits that are preferred by the majority of them are the same. Let's look for executives. It's almost the same. Medical aid comes up top. 
the performance bonus, housing loan, all these things. Companies, well, executives, you can see that they want a fully expensive company car. A pension certificate is just rearranging in terms of priority and what they prefer. But you can see that that is for the executive. So for executives, if you give them cars, they seem to be happy. Uh, they seem to prefer that. Uh, housing loan, they want housing loans. They also want airtime. Uh, they also want education assistant paid for their children. These are the things that you can do in order to, to attract and retain your, your executives. Then you go to the senior managers, basically before, before below the grade one and two. Uh, if you look at the level that we're talking about, you are now looking at this, almost the same, uh, including fully company, fully expensed company vehicle, or almost a mirror image of what the executives are looking for. Let's go to the middle managers. Uh, um, you can see medical aid, two tops. I don't see any major change there. The only change that is there is that they don't talk about the car. That's one of their top ones. Uh, that's your middle managers. Then the top, most preferred benefits by professionals. Uh, you can see there. Uh, at professional level, these are your maybe artisans and other th people that were looking for assistant accountant, medical aid to come stop, uh, uh, and also issues to do with school fees. Um, that's what you see there. Then the top most preferred by non managerial, this is interesting. If you look at the non managerial employees, you find that medical aid contributions to come stop, pension, education assistant, housing allowance. Housing loan, 13th check, performance bonus, funeral car, withdrawal funeral assurance, school fees assistance for children, and, uh, and personal loans. Those are some of the benefits that people do aspire, uh, that, that they prefer, especially in the Zimbabwe market. Uh, then the top most preferred benefits by male employees, not much variation. There, we're trying to check if there are any gender differences, not much variation uh, from that. Uh, you can see there. Then top most preferred by female employees, again, not much variation. Yes, there are variations here and there. If you go there, number one for male employees, medical aid versus performance bonus. For female employees, medical aid uh, followed by 13th check. Uh, those are the, 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 the key ones that you find. Surprisingly, when you look at all these things, you don't find things like company bars. And uh, what is we, I know there was a debate sometime of groceries. What is you can give people groceries, but remember, it's not the most preferred. But people will take it if you give them. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily mean that's the most preferred from the data that we got. Over well, the shortcoming of the data is that the data was collected online. We could have excluded most of the non managerial employees maybe without access to email and the internet. And so that could skew the results. So uh, you need to interpret the results for the non managerial with a pinch of salt, uh, given that the, the sampling was not a random sample as we went through this. OK, so in conclusion, uh, I, I think uh, going forward, what we are seeing is that uh, uh, if there is stability, we don't expect to see a lot of salary increases between now and December, uh, because what we are seeing now is that uh, 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 companies already, because they made a lot of changes in June, July, and August, what we are seeing now as we go into September to the end of the year is probably maintaining those, because if anything, any major changes that happens, between now and December, if they are not begged by a subsequent increase in, 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 in revenue, they are going to be unsustainable. Already you can see there's aggregate demand is low, which means the volumes are going to be low. For most companies that sell uh, their products and services in Zimbabwe, they are going to be low. So if that goes down, it will affect your cash flow. And very likely, we do know that there are some most companies are actually struggling to pay salaries now, especially those that are paying in ZWR because they have not managed to raise enough enough ZWA to pay their staff. And we have had discussions with quite a number of companies where they're saying, look, what do we do now when we don't have, we don't have enough ZWA to pay our staff uh, because we are not getting paid in ZWA. When you go to US dollars, because US dollar demand is depressed, you also don't get enough, enough US dollars to pay all your staff. So that's the dilemma that is there. And if there is nothing that's going to happen in terms of loosening up the Zim dollar a bit, uh, yes, there is going to be serious constraints in terms of economic construction, and the most economists have already started talking about that. That's a challenge, and it will affect you as you are looking at your staff, how we are going to be able to, to remunerate them, even with the current pay that you are paying them now. So I don't foresee any major salary changes between now and December unless the inflation starts going up and unless the depreciation of the same dollar continues. And I do understand the authorities are trying to plug that gap 
because it's not in, it's in the interest of everyone to make sure that the stability in the exchange rate, the stability in the cost of living, so that people can plan their life and be able to produce uh, going forward. But already uh, uh, output, I uh, was listening to some economists last night, and they are predicting that output is going significantly going to go down in the coming months. Uh, if we continue in the state that we're in, and you need to put that at the back of your mind as you are preparing uh, your, your for your for your for, to manage your remuneration and everything, so that you don't then go and recommend something that is ultimately going to be unsustainable for your business, especially those that are carrying huge uh, staff costs. Uh, that will be really a danger, a sign for 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 you. And ultimately, they will come back and they say HR has recommended. Uh, there's nothing wrong with checking what the market is saying, but be very careful before you recommend it, an adjustment. You must do your own projection, see whether you'll be able to sustain, you'll be able to afford and sustain. Because affordability can happen one or two months, then after that, you are not able to afford. These are all challenges that you need to, uh, to factor in. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, let's have uh, the discussion now where we, we, we discuss and uh, let's hear uh, people's views. What are you seeing? Uh, uh, what are you seeing and where, where, where are you seeing uh, uh, yourself? Okay. You're okay. You want to start? Do you have questions? If you have good questions. Thank you so much, uh, Memory. Thank you. Uh, this is a very good, you know, uh, presentation. And um, what's worrying me is the dilemma that uh, we are faced with, wherein you mentioned uh, companies failing to raise the WL to beat the, you know, uh, the cost of employment, at mm -hmm. the same time failing to raise the USD. Uh, uh, to also meet, you know, the same costs. Mm -hmm. Now, in the event that he, I'm trying to come up with a, probably a, a, a unique remuneration structure, mm -hmm. and of course, uh, it's inevitable that I avoid like this presentation of reality on the mm -hmm. ground that is happening. Mm -hmm. uh, how best can I advise my board? Because uh, I could be in that situation. Actually, I mean that situation where I'm trying to come up with something, but some of the matters uh, even get rejected be, before we attempt because of uh, these other, you know, uh, issues bedev bedeviling the country uh, per yeah. se. And the fear that uh, we might fail to uh, sustain whatever we come up with. But at the same time, uh, Vashandi, they are also uh, putting pressure uh, to the employer, could you know, uh, shall we declare incapacitation to come to work? Mm -hmm. you, you get what I mean? Yes, yes. So, if I, I mean, you know, <laughs> whatever, they call it yeah. a situation or a dilemma, and I'm really, really uh, studied on how best I should proceed. Thank you, memory. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Goba. The the few discussions that we've had with the other similar professionals in a similar situation in the private sector, actually, is that... Uh, I would don't go for for something that is permanent. We are in an emergency situation. So what you do is you look at your income, you discuss with your finance what do we have in ZW, what do you have in 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 in, in Zim dollar. Try to to have a mix and match of the of the of the amounts uh, uh, based on that. Uh, when I say based on that, is a, if you've got more US dollars, put give a portion in US dollars as a temporary measure. So because you're basically suspending your normal pay pay run, as it were, uh, to come up with something that is to give the employee probably the uh, same salary, uh, but uh, at the uh, 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 looking at your own income. The, the dilemma again is if you're going to use the, the official rate, your you the, the if let's say your employees were paying were being paid the same dollar. And you're going to use the official rate, it means you're going to pay more, pay more US dollars. And you may not have those US dollars. That's another another dilemma. So do the permutations with the help of finance and say, okay, if you were to do payment, it was for you, for example, your state entity, you can't even talk about the other rate uh, that we that is there. So you just go there and say, if we were to pay, uh, what ratio would we use given our money that we have? 
in, in US dollars and also in same dollars. That, that's what we advise quite a number of companies. I did get feedback from one of the companies where they said, look, we did a stock gap measure. It was an emergency because they had no money to, to, to be able to pay full salaries in either currency. So they had to, to, to agree that they, what they would do is uh, uh, pay 20% in, in, in US dollars and 70% in, 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 in ZWL. And in actual fact, what they ended up doing is they, they had to stagger even that payment because they had no money. For, um, the, the, the total amount goes up, the demand has gone down. The total amount in both US dollars and Zim dollars could not meet their standard payroll cost. So they had to stagger and they agree with their employees that, look, we will pay you this in this combination. And uh, after a few other days, if the cash will improve, we will clear the balance. That's how they, they, they did it. But the, the danger, like you indicated, is that if you tie yourself in a US dollar cost, and with the way aggregate demand is going down, you may get to a stage where you are not able to sustain the pay. That, that's where the danger is. I hope I gave you some bit of uh, guidance there. Okay. Yeah, uh, okay. thanks. Uh, yep, you did memory. Thank you. Maybe let me give others uh, the chance. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Okay, if I may come in, Mr. Angu, thank you so much with this very good presentation. Um, mine, I think, uh, it's, it's more of what should we do, considering that what is more preferred on the benefits is medical aid and pension from mm -hmm. your presentation. Yes. And uh, if you look at medical aid, there are mm -hmm. so huge shortfalls which employees are facing when they go to seek these uh, drugs. Mm -hmm. And uh, same applies to pension. Uh, we know what happened whenever there is a change in terms of uh, the, the, the currents, but these are most preferred. Probably, I don't know how best can we lobby to make sure that these are the most preferred benefits okay. in order to make sure that we protect that from the English point of view. Yeah. Two, yeah. the yeah. other issue is on um, paying part in USD and then part in uh, Zim dollar. Mm -hmm. the, the other problem which I have realized is that uh, I'm not so sure from the policy point of view what needs to be done. If mm -hmm. you do that from the tax point of view, mm -hmm. uh, you, you will find out that the tax will be very, very high on the yes. employee side if, yes. if you do that. So that you need to be what the 100% USD or 100% um, assume to all because the moment you split, you have to change everything to USD, and then it takes USD, and it will be very, very difficult on the employee side. So I don't know from you, Mr. Nguwe, and other practitioners here present, how mm -hmm. best can we look from the policy point of view? Because this policy is not helping anyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think let's start with the medical aid and pension. One of my suggestions is that for for, pay, for, for medical aid, I think as employers, maybe through MCOs or CZI, you would really need to, uh, to make lots of noise around that. Because I think to some extent, some of the medical aid societies are actually shortchanging the employees because of the, the, short, the shortcomings. The cost of medical insurance is significantly gone down. And you may actually even at an individual level have to, to, to sit down with your service provider and say, look, with this kind of shortfalls, we would rather move. There, I do know there are others that are actually very good and the shortfalls are very limited. So you may have to do that either at interest level or you do that at an individual level. I know someone who actually tried and they actually got a very good deal from the medical aid provider. Well, they, they were afraid because of the numbers. They were afraid that of losing that particular client. So you may have to do that. Because if you look at it now, if you are aged between 45 to 55 there and above, 45 and above, the cost of medical aid for some of the elite medical aid societies, it, you're almost paying a million, almost in Zen dollars. Uh, so oh. yeah, that, that, that's huge. Imagine paying a thousand every month for medical aid. And uh, it doesn't necessarily you're going to get sick every month, but you then go to hospital, you still get a shot for after paying a thousand every month. You, you may imagine that that's huge. So uh, I would suggest that uh, let, let's focus at the industry level. Uh, and, and they start even from IPMZ, people should start making lots of noise around uh, the, these shortfalls and how the, the medical aid society can restructure and make sure they help the employees. But the reason why, if you go back to some, we'll share the full report on those on that survey because it was just released today. If you look at the reasons why most of the companies, uh, uh, employees would be concerned about medical aid, as an example. It's, 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 it's largely because the public health system is, is ailing. 
uh, if the public health system was working, not many people would get one because you still need, uh, you know that you get the service that you require. Uh, for pension, I was talking to, uh, 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 please engage Commissioner Maradzikwa at uh, IPEC, very accommodative, very, uh, even as an industry, even as a, as a company, uh, uh, you, you can actually engage here. Yeah? We would actually even try to call them and organize a session for them here. Yeah. Uh, so that we can have a discussion. I'll try to talk to you and see if we can uh, have a session from IPEC. What is their 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 their, their view around the issue that pensioners are facing, uh, and also uh, the, the pension of the future? People are paying now. What happens next? And one of the things, just look at is it's good that you talked about pension. If you look at it, you will find that, uh, for example, uh, Mugabe is working for a particular company. Uh, you decided to leave and you're contributing to pension. Most of the pension schemes would say, okay, uh, we only refund you your own contribution deducted, so many things deducted, and you get basically nothing. The rest of the money, they retain. What they do with that money, no one knows. Uh, and these are all issues that are reality on the ground. You can imagine how much savings that the insurance companies are making by just retaining the employer's contribution. Uh, and who gets that employer's contribution? Uh, these are all issues. But it does vary by 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 sector as well, or by the pension scheme. The the other issue that you raise is a very important issue: the issue of obviously tax on uh, income. Um, we, we we yeah we could organize to have a Zimra employee, a Zimra senior official, maybe to talk to you uh, about that. It's a major major issue. I have seen lots of complaints around around, around that. Uh, where uh, most people would say, let me just pay them in Zim, in Zim dollar. But what was happening between July and August, employees were really not worried about the quantum of what they were getting in US dollars. They just wanted something in US dollars. They just wanted something in US dollars to meet some of the basic needs that were very difficult to pay. Rent, for example, if you are, if you are renting, uh, you almost find no way where they would accept Zim dollars. Uh, transport to some extent, somewhere, you find all oh, those are these. That's why people were so desperate to say, even if I get 400 US dollars, it's better than getting it in Zim dollar. I will have to go through the process of going to change it on the black market. And if, if I don't change it properly, you can get arrested. All those things were really major issues. So you have raised very crucial issues, uh, uh, that are open for discussion. And if other people have got other answers, please feel free to come in. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Amur. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, try more. Thank you very much, Memory, for, for, for this presentation, and uh, I, especially the, the last one where you were looking at um, uh, the most preferred benefits. Uh, I want to tap your views in terms of uh, what's, the, what's the views around total cost employer. I know this issue was topical when we were getting into US dollar uh, after the GNU. Well, what are the sentiments now? Now that the quantum of um, a pay on other issues to do with medical aid pensions are also rising. And mm -hmm. actually, if you are to do some comparisons in terms mm -hmm. of uh, the value, it's almost like 70 to 30, 70 mm -hmm. being other benefits and 30 being the real, real pay. And um, mm -hmm. this raises the serious perception issue because when employees are paid, they don't look at all these things. They just mm -hmm. look at their take home. And mm -hmm. even if when you are trying to make a salary increase, I will give you uh, an insight. When mm -hmm. you then say, I want to give an X amount of salary increase, all the mm -hmm. other benefits are either like if you are paying in, 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 in RTGS, your medical aid is self-liquidating that the service provider is always uh, aligned to the market. So mm -hmm. the, 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 the share of uh, quantum to distribute on the basic salary becomes mm -hmm. very, very, uh, very, very uh, small. And when mm. you go to the negotiations and you start to propose some figures, people will laugh at you because they won't mm. be factoring in all these issues. So I want to mm. I want to hear your views around total cost to employer. And is it the correct time to get in or not? Yeah, maybe yeah. The, the total cost employer, the, the huge debate. If you look at our last research that we did, 36% of uh, the survey companies are on total cost to, to company, uh, and the sizable uh, number, uh, roughly about 15 to 12 percent, are on a hybrid, which is not full total cost to company. And those that are on a hybrid, 
not 100% full total cost company, uh, mainly converting the motor vehicle into total cost because of the huge maintenance costs that companies were facing. Uh, so that, that that's the statistics in terms of what is on the ground. The total cost to company works in a very stable environment. Let me give an example. If you are if you were to do total cost to company now on motor vehicle, just looking at the cost of motor vehicle for the level that are HR executives who are driving a Fortuna, for example, you would need roughly between seventy five thousand to about eighty five thousand to buy that Fortuna uh, in terms of cost. And for you to repay, because you are getting that loan from the from the bank, for you to repay that loan, you would need in Zim dollar, you would need roughly about three million per month net. Uh, that is, this is just for the vehicle to repay the vehicle. No maintenance cost, uh, no fuel, uh, just to repay the vehicle. So, if you were to look at giving someone in that particular situation an allowance, that allowance will need to be close to about four point five million, uh, just to cater for the vehicle alone. Uh, without it, uh, the, and there is no way the best salary will also be 4.5. This is a net, if it grows that amount up, we are looking at six, seven thousand, seven million, sorry. Uh, it's just the motor vehicle allowance. Then when you go to the best salary, it will probably be around 2.5 or 2 million. As Time was saying, you already see the, the difference. Okay, so the, the challenge is that the total cost government works very well in a very stable environment. But even in the current situation, we still do see that some companies are very resilient. They don't want to leave it. They think it's much cleaner, especially when it comes to vehicle. It depends on the number of people. Imagine if you had, uh, if you got uh, roughly about uh, 100 managers all on company vehicle, you would need to employ people to really run just with the fleet of the, the stuff with the, the personal vehicles for the company, T tires, maintenance, service, and things like that. And the same applies to school fees. If you are paying 500 employees school fees direct to the school and things like that, all these are all administrative costs. So others still feel that there is a there is still a benefit. But uh, my recommendation is that it would make a lot of sense once way, when there is no stability, the total cost company becomes very difficult to manage because cost the need to increase, adjust the, the, the vehicle allowance especially, or the school fees allowance, that is the part of the total cost uh, allowance. But I am seeing actually more requests for total cost uh, largely being pushed from the board that are saying uh, the old model. Uh, let's, let's just take an example. If you've got 100 man managers who need, as an example, a, 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 a double cap, and it's cost fifty thousand as an example. That's a lot of money. That that home, that amount can recapitalize the bank. They recapitalize your your company for in a very big way. So what what you are doing is your the capital cost of of buying the vehicle is being pushed to the bank, and you are actually transferring the risk to the bank. Well, the, you are actually negotiating on behalf of the employees. So, so and so bank, please give our employees a, a, this kind of loan. What we guarantee is that we take the money from our payroll and give you. Okay, but we're looking at the other side of total cost is that the best salary is low, and that has been suppressed for a very long time. Uh, when you go for negotiations, the problem from the employer side is that, is that if you increase the best salary, it will increase your overtime, it will increase your medical your, your medical aid if it's a percentage of, of your salary to increase your pension, and many other things that are linked to to the best salary. So these are all challenges. So my advice to you will be. Uh, if you are already on the total cost company, I would not suggest you you, you get out of it. You remain there, soldier on. Uh, just put safeguards uh, around issues that are problematic and find a way of how you can deal with them. If you are not on total cost company, but you, you have no huge fleet of personal vehicles for staff, maybe you can remain on the hybrid. But if you have got a huge fleet, remember the same cost that you are, that you don't want to pass on to employee, they will still be passed on to the company anyway. One way or the other, because service of this vehicle is still very high. The fuel will still go up and many other things like that. So that will be my advice. If it's working for you, keep it. If it's not working, review. But don't review it simply because uh, uh, there's been temporary changes in the market. Uh, let's see until maybe end of the year. If things stabilize, total cost will be the best way to go. Uh, from my point of view, thank you. Any other question? Uh, thank you, memory. Uh, sort of have to come back again. Yes. Um, you raised a, a very interesting uh, issue on um, the pension and uh, the mm -hmm. preferences by uh, whether it's management or, or you know other yes. staff mm -hmm. and. Um, I would like to say that of late, I've seen um, 
what shall I say, um, a recommendation for mm. pension funds to buy the gold coins. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying this is a, a development uh, towards something that is unknown uh, in terms of uh, what is happening in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, there's the feeling that, okay, uh, patients, uh, members' funds, mm -hmm. say as a board of trustee, you want maybe to embark on, on that route if you don't know what it means, because mm -hmm. now uh, it, you, it may be taken uh, against you on your personal capacity as a, mm -hmm. as a board of trustee member, for example. Mm -hmm. So when you mention the issue of patient and the issue of Mrs. Muradzigwa, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 I, I think it would be of interest uh, to really invite her, uh, and uh, if we can maybe uh, hear from IPEC, because the, the, my major worry is that these are members' funds. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be uh, told, uh, uh, maybe uh, be on the wrong side of the, you know, coin as a board of trustee member after maybe having uh, taken uh, the route of uh, buying the gold coins vis-a-vis -vis mm -hmm. against the background that uh, maybe most of us mm -hmm. don't understand the implication. I submit, um, Mr. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, definitely, Mrs. Maratka, I'll talk to you uh, so that we can organize. I will actually organize through ourselves and uh, have a session maybe in the coming week. Uh, and and I, know, I was talking to you yesterday in terms of the schedule and other things. So I'll talk to you and I'll, I'll let you, all of you when we have got a date from here. Then the other issue, uh, Mrs. Goba, on the a non uh, territory of gold coins. The, the beauty about, or the, the, the plus about the gold coins from a pension point of view is that it, the, the gold coins have been given what is called the prescribed uh, asset status, uh, which basically means it's guaranteed by the government. It's prescribed national asset status. So it's like buying your uh, uh, TBs and other government paper. Uh, you don't lose in the, in the process. Uh, that's, that is guaranteed. But again, you are right. If you make a wrong decision, it doesn't necessarily mean there's no risk. If you make a wrong decision and you end up losing people's money uh, as, a, as a board of trustees, you are still liable uh, for the decision that you make. But uh, let's bring someone from IPEC and, uh, and get full details. We will have a, a, a full presentation on what are the challenges, what uh, boards of trustees can do. Uh, and, and if you've got any particular topics that you want them to cover in their presentation, you can forward those to me, then I'll send them to this is uh, If she's going to be there, I'll try to talk to her so that she can be there herself or, or someone else from IPEC. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Another question? There's, there's one in the chat box. Oh, okay. Thank you for the good presentation. Are there any comments that are just in line with the official exchange rate? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, they, they are. The company, most of the companies, if you are a state entity, most of the time you can't talk of any other exchange rate uh, 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 because of the, the, the consequences. Uh, I don't know in the in the in the in the in the um, uh, in the private sector what I have heard, which is normally not readily available, is that they what their own internal rate, which I suspect is a blend of the official and the parallel market. Uh, if you're a private company, it's much easier to maneuver. If you're a state entity, very difficult to use anything else besides the, 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 the official exchange rate. But also tracking the exchange rate every month, it means you have to look at your source of income. If your source of income is a, a fluctuate, uh, you can tie yourself in a very high cost structure without guarantee that the income will come next month. And you put an organization at a very big risk of not being able to sustain the salaries going forward. Thank you. Okay, if there are no further questions, thank you very much for, for attending the session. We'll continue in actual fact, what you want to organize as well, just for your information. It's just a, not, not necessarily a presentation from us, a round table where we are going, maybe in the, in the coming two weeks, we're going to have, where do we go from here? Uh, discussion around salaries. And I would welcome uh, a panel, those who want to be part of that panel. Uh, you share your own experiences, your own research if you've got. Uh, I, I just need about 10 people to be part of that group. Uh, where do we go from here? Zimbabwean salaries, where do we go from here? There will be a discussion. And if you're interested, either send me an email or you send me a WhatsApp. I'll put you on the panel. On the panel.
and we have an hour discussion on that. We'll also bring an economist, most likely Professor Tony Hawkins and someone else, just give an economic overview before we go into the details of the discussion. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day.